How are you doing this evening? I'm going to remove my glasses so I don't put so much reflection into the uh, screen. How's that? Is that a little bit better? Adjust my microphone here a little bit. And swing into the middle of the fray. How are you doing? So today is um, Monday, January 16th. According to um, the marketing team for a British travel company, it's Blue Monday, the supposed saddest day of the year. Now, I can't, I can't really question whether that's true or not, but I, I do know that a lot of people I spoke to today were really struggling. And I had, uh, I had my moments throughout the day. And oddly enough, you know, I had a, uh, I was feeling empty and alone and lost and confused, and that happens sometimes. Pardon me. Anyway, I'm feeling a little bit better now. I had some time to meditate and, uh, that helped me to clear my thoughts to a certain degree, you know. And I thought I would sit here and, and talk with you beautiful people about what I'm feeling today and how I can probably maybe express those feelings in a constructive manner. So, like I said, it's supposed to be Blue Monday. Now, Hear my chair creaking? <laughs> Today felt slightly off to me um, from the moment I woke up uh, in a state of confusion. Didn't sleep well last night. And then I, uh, you know, rolled out of bed and made some coffee and started my day. Did the, the morning show solo because Mr. Beaver was traveling today. So I, uh, yeah, I, uh, you know, worked all day, and then I jumped on Dean's show for a bit, and that was actually very invigorating and rejuvenating because I get my energy from other people. And when you work from home all, all day alone, it can be difficult. I had wanted to go skiing on the weekend, but I wasn't feeling well enough. And then, of course, today I was just, I felt off all day. I don't know why. Maybe, maybe it's that January, mid-January winter blues thing that so many of us get struck by, the uh, lack of sunlight, sunlight hours that is, of course, and uh, quite honestly, we had some sunshine yesterday, and I think that was the first time in about two plus weeks. It's been a while since we've had a, a sunshiny day, and that does take its toll upon uh, a person. Well, anyway... Let me get us some water. My throat's very dry. Oh, that's better. So, yeah, feeling off all day and trying to figure it out. And I knew it was large brain chemistry. Um, yeah. I'm just... Uh, when the chemicals aren't working properly, you know, that the serotonin gets transmitted, but the receivers, the neurotransmitters send out the serotonin and the neuroreceivers don't pick it up. So that's why I'm on an SSRI, a supplemental serotonin reuptake inhibitor, which means a reuptake is the transmitter. I'm just going to get scientific for a few minutes here. I'll give you my layman's terms about how I understand the brain chemistry works. The Neurotransmitters send out the serotonin, and you have neuroreceivers. But sometimes, in many people, and I am one of them, the neuroreceivers don't, they don't catch the serotonin. So as a result, the serotonin goes back into the transmitter, it reuptakes it. So a supplemental reuptake inhibitor prevents the transmitter from 
taking the serotonin back, and thereby it has to go into the receiver. Yeah, I'm feeling a little bit sad today, Leanne. Thank you for noticing. I just, um, I don't know, melancholy, um, despair, uh, definitely some depression. There's some anxiety there too today. Um, and none of it is needed because, you know, you have that, the anxiety lies to you, right? Tells you that things aren't good when they actually are good. <laughs> and and I chuckle because I, I do know better, but sometimes it's difficult to control what your own brain is telling you. Things are good. I mean, you know, there's always room for improvement. I could use some more money and... Uh, I could probably use a proper vacation because the last time I took time off, I was sick for the first week and couldn't go anywhere, which is, you know, that would be a bit of a bummer, and it was, but that's okay. You know, the time off was the time off. It was needed, and I uh, I did enjoy having time off. Now, sorry, very thirsty. Yeah, it was difficult to get through today. Um, I was very tired. I haven't slept well in the last couple of days. And, uh, just feeling, yeah, quite literally uh, empty. Uh, empty, alone, unwanted, unloved, unneeded. Now, I know it's all literally in my head. So I have that, um sober second thought uh, I know that uh, I know that it's all in my head but sometimes you just can't control your chemistry right even though the medication helps sometimes you just you can't fight it and you have to give into it because it's quite exhausting today was one of those days I didn't even eat lunch for lunch I lied down and took a nap which is one of the lovely things about working from home when you're not feeling 100% yourself. But it's okay because, you know, sometimes you, you got to do, got to go through it, right? I know that tomorrow is another day. Tomorrow will be a better day. And I will be better. Well, that's six weeks behind you, Elaine. That's good. I know you still have a ways to go. But the six weeks, that's that's great news. You're headed uh, well towards the path of healing. You know, I... I one second. I had to clear my throat. I, uh, let's just switch up the camera here for a different angle. How about that one? The lighting on this is kind of interesting, don't you think? The way it sort of um, makes me almost... Uh, ghostly? <laughs> I can't, because I'm over there in the monitor. <laughs> I'm over, I'm over there, so I can't even see myself on this camera. I can, I suppose I can do this, though. Hang on a sec. So, just so that things look normal to me when I look in the monitor. It's weird how the cameras, I have two different cameras from the same manufacturer, and uh, the adjustments are the same on both, but one catches the light differently than the other, which I think is kind of ironic. Let's just brighten it up a little bit, shall we? Just a little bit there. There we go. Now oh, that's a little bit too much. Put the contrast up. No brightness. There we go. Playing with the uh, optics is fun. I have a third camera, but for some reason, um, the uh, software that I, I use, it says it doesn't have enough juice to drive it. So we'll just go on with this. And I can always do this for fun too, so I can just look at you there. I look at you there. <laughs> See, I I still I can still laugh. I mean, even though I'm having a bit of a rough day, I'm uh, I still have my sense of humor about me, you know? Let me just find something. There we go. I was just looking for something. Now. So, yeah, my eyes look brown on the other camera. They're well, they're 
they're bluish green. What do they look like right now? Blue, green. You tell me. Changes all the time. So, I uh, am. Yeah. yeah, I spent some time earlier this evening. Um, I ran to the uh, grocery store, came home, had some dinner, sat down, and uh, put on the television. I didn't really watch anything. I just had something on in the background as noise while I tried to clear my mind of the negative thoughts, which isn't always an easy thing to do. Sometimes the mind just wants to wander and do its own thing, and, and you know, it's not in control of it, unfortunately. I wish I was in better control of it. So I'm just, I know you're hearing my mouse clicks here as I adjust things. This microphone is very sensitive. But I use it because it picks up all the uh, subtleties of my voice. And the point of uh, ASMR is to provide you with a soothing experience, right? So, let's take a deep breath together, shall we? You know, it's quite amazing how that can really help to calm your mind and your body at the same time. I... Very thirsty. It's um, I worked up quite a sweat. Oh, I had I did I was a little um, distressed earlier. Um, somewhere between here and the walk to the grocery store, maybe within the grocery store, I lost my Africa pendant that I've had on since two thousand and one that my mother had made for me in Botswana. I was in the store and I put my grocery basket down. And I went to grab something to put in it, and I felt something slide down my shirt. So I immediately reached and realized my chain was gone. So I thought, oh, I'll just look for the pit. It's gone. So I was quite upset about that because I cannot replace it. Um, it was made for me. My mother had it made for me uh, when she and my father were living in Botswana. So I'm sad to say that it's probably gone forever. So I had a bit of a... A difficult time with that because it's something I've been wearing for 21 years to remind me of how that trip saved my life. Um, I was severely depressed when I went on it and uh, I met people there who have less, uh, less than nothing. I don't know how else to put it. And they were the happiest people I ever met in my life. So it made me realize I was focused on all the wrong things. And yes, I still had depression, and yes, I still had anxiety. But coming to the realization that um, these folks had reached the pinnacle. They, they, they were never going to go any further than where they were, and I was just scratching the surface of my life, and I was miserable, and they were happy. Taught me a very valuable lesson. It's to take... Um, taught me about gratitude in a way that, that no book ever could, no speech ever could, no poem ever could. I needed to witness it firsthand. I needed to see it firsthand and understand. And it wasn't something I could have done if I hadn't gone there. So wearing that pendant around my neck reminded me of, of that experience every day. And, uh, yeah, I'm having a tough time because now it's gone. And uh, I don't know if I'll ever see it again, maybe if I'm lucky. Um, but I, I could have lost it anywhere along the... It's about a kilometer from here, so along that route. I retraced my steps, I went through the store, I couldn't see, see it or find it anywhere. So instead of getting extremely bent out of shape... I surrendered to the fact that it's probably gone, and there is little to nothing I can do about it. And it sucks, and I was upset, and I still am, but that's just how it goes. I hope so, Leanne. I hope it'll come back. We'll see. Well, you know, you've got to have hope. 
And I mean, it is, in the end, at the end of the day, it's just, it's, it's a trinket. I mean, it really, it, it did mean a lot to me, but at the end of the day, it's a trinket. I didn't lose a limb, my vision, what's left of my hearing. I can still walk and talk and eat and breathe and sleep. So really, in the grand scheme of things, oh well. I mean, that's kind of how I have to look at it, because I think to dwell on it is just going to make me depressed, and I, I don't need to add to it, right? <laughs> you have to have a positive outlook, even in the darkest of times. I remember a saying I read many years ago, and uh, I decided to adopt it, and it was, it's, it's, um, I, I checked around my apartment, Mike. Um, I did. I haven't seen it anywhere. It's possible. It's possible. I may have missed it. It might. It could have fallen, hit the carpet, and rolled under the couch. But I haven't. I haven't looked yet. I'll take a look later. But um, a saying I read many, many years ago um, stuck with me at the time, and I used it for a long time, and I still use it from time to time. It's. It's a little bit simplistic in. Um, it's wording, but there's a certain truth to it. And that saying is, happiness is a decision you have to make. And that's largely true. Now, I'm a happy guy, despite the fact that I have depression. Depression is a, is a chemical imbalance in the brain, and it uh, can affect your your moods, your temperament, um, your ability to concentrate, your ability to be functional as a human being, because you can be have days when you can't get out of bed. I, sometimes I have weekends like that. It happens. I do my best to try and get up and get out. But there are times when it's very, very difficult. Times when, you know, I'll see my friends get up and go up early in the morning and go out and do something on a Saturday, and I'm like... Yeah, I used all my energy this week just trying to get through the work week. And without the medicine, I'd be in a much worse place. I haven't had a sick day um, since 2019. Not one. I had a day when I hurt my back and I worked from home. But that I hurt my back at work, so I worked from home for the, the two remaining days of the week, the Thursday and the Friday. And I always work from home on Fridays, so it was just one more day. Anyway, um, what I'm getting, where I'm going with that, not being sick is, in the past I would take a sick day, not because I was physically ill, but because I couldn't say I needed a, a mental health day, because nobody gave you mental health days. So you would just take a sick day, an unpaid sick day, because I don't have those. Although, no, that's not true. My employer provides me with three a year. Okay, so. Let's move on from there. Because I will go on a rant. And I should save that for Wednesday morning. <laughs> when I deal with the political show. This is not a political show. This is a show that is uh, a safe space that I've tried to create for anyone who needs this space, for anyone who needs to come in and join the chat, listen to me, talk about my life and how I cope with anxiety and depression and what I do to get through. Some days are better than others, obviously, I mean... Today was a tough day. I know it was a marketing ploy to come up with this Blue Monday thing as the bluest day of the year, but could could be some reality to it. As I said, a lot of people I spoke to today said the same thing. There's something off. Anyway, one second. Because it's something was off, I try my best to uh, be as positive and joyful 
and happy and grateful as I can, as I am limited to. I had reached out to a few people, some, fr some friends, and I had not heard from them in a few days. And when the anxiety creeps in, it starts to say, oh, that's because they don't, they don't have time for you. You don't matter. You're not important. And that's, you know, me coming to the realization that that's not the case. They just have busy lives like most people do. What's really taking place is simply that. They'll get in touch with me when they have the time. They're not trying to avoid me. But my anxious brain will tell me that. And then you go into the spiral of depression where it's like, well, of course, they don't have time for you. Nobody does because you're not important. You're not worthy of love. You're not blah. And the spiral can go out of control. So to avoid the spiral, I do this. Take the medication. I should have, I think my... Um, I have to check my benefits policy to see when they renew for the year because I can't remember if it was calendar year or fiscal year because I used up everything I had for therapy. I only have X number of dollars for that. So um, and trying to get back in will probably take several months, so maybe in the fall. We'll see. Hey, look, I'm going to continue to meditate. I'm going to continue to come in here to this space and talk with you. I'll be open about my mental health. I will continue to medicate as well and find joy in the little things because the little things can sometimes give us everything we need to get through the day. I also find going out of my way to be extra kind to people, to be sincerely, genuinely friendly and compassionate, gives me more than it does for them. Because it really does help lift my spirits. I know that just smiling at somebody can help lift their spirits. It creates a chemical reaction in the brain. And it can uh, help make somebody's day that much better. And when I meet people in public and I can see that somebody's struggling, I am... Um, raise my the pitch of my voice and uh, speak softly to ask them how they're doing. I don't speak in this voice because it can be frightening to some people and I don't want to do that. Or they may get the wrong idea and think that I'm hitting on them when that's not the case at all. I'm just a concerned person who's concerned for another person. And when you see somebody suffering, if you're capable of reaching out in the gentlest of manner, please do so if you're capable. Not everybody is. and Do not feel guilty if you can't. Not everybody is capable of it. There are times when I cannot reach out to other people to help them. Anxiety can control your brain, even when you know what's going on. It's still difficult to silence the voice that lies to you. Uh, how are we feeling? Everybody, everybody nice and mellow right now? Do we need to do some breathing exercises? Or shall I provide you with some whisper content? I know that I should have gotten some more water because... The whisper content really dries out my throat. So, for those of you who like to listen to this, for those of you who suffer from anxiety and depression as I sometimes do, for those of you who need to know that it's okay to not be okay, I want you to know I'm here for you. And I want you to know that this space is for anyone who needs it. Anyone. Period. Even those we disagree with on multiple things, when we come here to this place, we don't discuss those things. We're here to discuss what we're dealing with, why we're suffering, and how we can prevent each other. 
each other from suffering worse by creating a community that cares about one another. This is supposed to be a place of kindness and compassion. The religion, politics, sports, music, all of that is left at the door. I don't want anything brought in here that anybody can argue about. I only want people to come in here and talk and share and tell me what what you're feeling and how you're feeling and how I may be able to provide some sort of assistance to you. If I can help to calm your nerves, if I can help you with your anxiety, if I can help you with your depression. Because this is meant to be a place of caring and compassion. There's no judgment here. Having both anxiety and depression, I've faced enough judgment throughout my life. I'm very thankful and grateful that the world is evolving to the place where we can sit and openly discuss things like this. I'm very grateful and thankful that the time has come for us to cast aside the stigma involved with an illness. It's not something that should be spoken about in whispers. That was a bit of a pun. It is something that we should speak about openly and honestly and without fear of repercussion or reply, reprisal. A recent television advertisement there's a gentleman who was obviously an elementary school teacher, and as he is set to walk into his classroom, you can see that he's having a full-blown anxiety attack. He turns away from the door, and he puts his back to the wall, and he slides down to the floor. And the gentleman playing the part is a very talented actor, because I believed he was having an anxiety attack. He's a very good actor. And he turns and he looks at the camera and he says, one in four people in Ontario today, or was it Canada? I can't recall. But one in four are battling with anxiety. One quarter of the population. There are almost 16 million people in the province of Ontario. There's actually 15,300,000 one quarter of that suffers from anxiety. That's heavy. That's very, very heavy. And I think that if one quarter of the population of almost 16 million, I, and again, I can't remember if it was Canada or if it was just Ontario. If it was Canada, then we're, we're at 39,500,000 almost. So what's 25% of that, right? About 8 million? No. 8, eight times 5? Eight, five, eight, five, yeah. 10 million people. At 40 million, one quarter would be 10 million, wouldn't it? Correct me if I'm wrong. My math is a little off. Let's say 10 million people in Canada are suffering from anxiety at any given moment. Does that not trouble you? Because it troubles me. It troubles me to know that many of these people don't even know what's wrong with them. But thankfully, we now have an environment where somebody can say, I, I, I'm, I'm freaking out right now. I don't know what's going on. I feel like my heart is racing and my mind is spinning out of control. Like... You're having an anxiety attack. It's okay. Here, take my hand. Take some deep breaths. And listen to my voice. It's going to be okay. This is only temporary. It will pass. And you may need to seek some medication. And maybe some therapy. Because yes, although this is a chemical imbalance in the brain... There's usually a root cause for it. Not always, 
but usually therapy could help. Choose to take therapy or not. Choose to take medication or not. That is your decision. I'm not telling you how to live your life. I am telling you that it's made a huge difference in mine. And for that, I am grateful. For that, I am very thankful. And for this new environment that we're living in today, even though I know in the company that started the campaign of Let's Talk here in Canada has come under fire because everybody came to the realization that it was just a marketing ploy. And uh, they took $122 million in COVID money right after the Let's Talk day and then fired hundreds of employees across the country. Not getting political, and I'm not delving into the marketing of that company, but this year, instead of donating five cents for every text message, what they've gone and done is uh, donated $10 million to mental health care. The average over the last few years has been $8 million, so they've increased it by $2 million, And that's about the extent of it. They're just, here's the money, and we're going to shut up now. Remember to talk about it. not getting into the marketing ploy of a company um, because the thing is good. It's good what's being done. I can discuss the marketing ploy on our show Wednesday morning because I'm going to. Because that's political. This isn't. Raising the awareness getting people to open up and talk about the big things like this that are very important to talk about. The life you save may be your own. It may be somebody else's. It may be a friend, a family member, a lover, a co-worker. Or maybe just that person sitting next to you in the pub someday who you look over and you realize they're suffering. Maybe they could use somebody to talk to. Don't pry. Just say, hey, how's it going? Try and strike up a conversation. Maybe they'll be open to a conversation, maybe not. You won't know until you try, but I find talking about anything but what the problem is is very helpful to me when I'm in a state of crisis. So I don't want to dwell on the problem. It's all I've been thinking about. I came to the pub to get away from the problem. And I mean you know, in my mind. I know you can't run away from it, but you need to break from it from time to time. So for me, when I'm in a dark place like that, I'll call up a buddy and say, hey, we need to go for a beer. Not, I'm going for a pint, you want to join me? It's, we need to go for a beer, which is code. He's like, okay, I'll meet you there. We do not discuss where my head is at. Because I... I don't want to talk about it. I, I, I want to think about anything else to get my mind off of what I've been dwelling on for the last 8, 10, 12, sometimes 24 hours. This way, it gives me a chance to take a break from it. Then I can revisit it after I've had a chance to forget about it for a little while. You know, sometimes you need to forget about life for a while. Yeah, I know that's a, a line from Piano Man by Billy Joel, but it's legit. Tell me I'm wrong. Sometimes we need to forget about life for a while. That's why we go to the theater to watch a movie or the cinema. That's why we go to a, a play. That's why we go to a band, uh, to see a, a bar to see a live band or a concert. Forget about life for a while. You need to escape. You need to escape your own reality from time to time, because if you don't, all work and no play makes Jack a dull boy, right? Very strange way to say, um, Jack was suffering from severe psychosis because he wasn't getting the uh, escape from reality that he needed. 
So, that's where I sit right now. That's where my, uh, that's where my head is today. It was a tough day, but I'm feeling better now. Coming here to talk about it helps. Having people to share with it, share it with, that helps too. Knowing that there's somebody out there that might find my silly talking uh, to be helpful. And I say silly because, you know, I don't, I don't think anything I do is important, honestly. Come on, I'm Gen X, man. We're the forgotten generation. <laughs> But if I can help somebody, anybody, um, then it's all worthwhile. And that's why I do this. I want to try and help. It's the only way I can. I don't have money, you know, so <laughs> I, can't, uh, I can't put somebody into therapy if they need it. I certainly can't pay for it myself. So I do the best I can with uh, the resources I have. And I hope that this has been helpful. I hope that this will help you to um, find some peace, maybe some relaxation, and maybe maybe this will help you to really sit back and relax, find a calm place to lie down, get comfortable. Whether it's in bed or on a couch or in a big easy chair. Make sure that you removed your shoes, if you can, of course. Maybe you're listening to this on a plane, I don't know. People do listen to this in different areas on the live stream, and then there's the recorded version. So whenever and wherever you are when you're listening to this, get as comfortable as you can. Make sure your clothes are loose-fitting. Lie down or sit back. Relax. I want you to take ten deep cleansing breaths. Inhale. Hold it for three to five seconds. Exhale fully until you can no longer exhale. Hold that for three seconds. Inhale again. Repeat and do that ten times. As you start to do that, you'll feel yourself slowly relaxing. Your entire body will have a sense of warm well-being. You can imagine that all your muscles are beginning to loosen up. All the tension in your body is going to melt away. You're going to slowly drift off. Maybe you'll just take a nap. Maybe you'll take an hour or two to sleep. Maybe this will be something to assist you at the end of your evening when you need to fall asleep and you need some help to do so. Remember to relax, to breathe, concentrate on your heartbeat, pay attention to it, pay attention only to my voice and your heartbeat. Breathe in, breathe out. Relax, let the tension fall away, and drift off. And I hope that has helped you. It's been helpful to me. So thank you for coming out tonight. I appreciate each and every one of you, and I'm glad that uh, we're able to spend some time together. I'm going to try and uh, make it a habit of doing this every Monday at 9 p.m. If I can do it more than once a week, I will. But I'm going to try and schedule this for every Monday at 9 p.m. when I'm capable. Okay, Leanne. I am Batman. <laughs> You want to remove your shoes, yes. Remove your shoes. Loosen your clothing. Make sure you're relaxed. It's very important. Okay. I'm going to take my leave. Because I am... Um, 
I've enjoyed my time this evening, and I need to take care of some other things because, you know, I still have a, a life to lead, right? I still have things to do. But I'm going to try, and like I said, I'm going to make my, I'm going to put in my best effort. When I say try, I immediately think of Yoda. It is do or do not, there is no try. Um, I'm going to make my best effort to do this every Monday at 9 p.m. So, maybe we can put this in our calendars. I'll just start scheduling in advance. I'll see you then. Until that time, my friends, take care of yourselves. <laughs>